Hi there, and let's get to it. Today we're looking at the noise reduction function of the motion effects palette in DaVinci Resolve. The two types of noise reduction we have is temporal, which is where the software analyzes several frames in order to isolate noise from the parts of the footage where it does not detect moving objects, and spatial noise reduction, which focuses on the amount of high frequency noise within an image and smooths it out. Usually you use these two together in order to get the best possible effect. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer on my image to demonstrate just how noisy it is. So I believe this was shot at an incorrect ISO on our RED camera. And we'll begin with the temporal noise reduction on the left. We first have to determine how many frames need to be analyzed in order for the software to detect movement. Keep in mind though that the higher this number, then the more processing power this will require. Now this shot doesn't really have too much going on visually, it's just a bunch of people sitting and moving very slowly. So I could pretty much go for the minimum here. Next we need to identify the motion estimation type. We pick between faster, better, and none. As is usually the case with compositing, faster tends to mean worse and better tends to mean slower. So if you want the best possible output, you're going to have to be prepared to sit and wait a while. I'm going to stick with the default faster. And after that, we also have the motion range in which we can identify how much the objects that we're trying to identify in this footage are moving. So in my case, I've already pointed out that we have very little movement in the shot. So I may as well just go for a small motion range and that will lighten the load on my computer a little bit. Changing these settings has not affected my image whatsoever. This will only begin when I start adjusting the temporal threshold. My luma and chroma are bound, meaning that all of the noise will be targeted together. So I can go in and put in a preliminary amount. And that's already applied a softening effect on the footage. I'm not going to go overboard with this because remember, we're also going to be balancing the spatial noise reduction, which is also going to contribute to reduced noise. But so far, so good. I think I want to target luma and chroma separately because I'm seeing these blue splotches everywhere and that's a sign of chroma noise as opposed to luma, which tends to be more black and white looking. So I'm going to click on the link to break these two apart and I could decide to raise this just a touch and I'll leave it here for now and come back to it if I need to. The last option is blending, which means that you will reintroduce some of your original footage and grain into the picture, which you can do if you think that your reduction is starting to get too aggressive. Next, we're gonna be looking at spatial noise reduction. So once again, we begin by establishing whether the focus will be on processing this image faster or better. And in my case, I'll choose faster for now. And we then have to identify the radius of analysis. The larger radius will output a higher quality noise reduction, but it will take longer. So sticking with medium, we should get a pretty good output. Lastly, we've got the same controls for the threshold, luma and chroma. So I'll type in an amount for both. And that's had a significant impact on the image. I'm happy to say though that elements with a lot of detail in them are still staying sharp. It's only anything that it detects to be a gradient uh, that's being affected more than anything. Uh, so I can move on to another area where the grain is gonna stand out just to make some final touches. I think I'm still seeing some blue splotches that I'd like to address. So once again, I'm going to unlink the luma and chroma and perhaps play with the values a little bit. So you can see when I go from a 5 to a 20, I'm seeing a reduction in that blue, and I think that's what was bothering me more than anything. And then, of course, the last thing, once again, is the blend mode, which means that you can reduce the impact of this noise reduction as much as you like. When it comes to the node editor, there's not really a rule as to whether you should carry out your noise reduction before or after you start grading. I'm going to build up a very basic grade for this shot. and these are occurring after the noise reduction, but I can just as easily extract it from my workflow and pop it on the line afterwards. And the idea is that if you apply noise reduction before grading, the effect should be generally smoother, but your details are more likely to be compromised. Whereas if you apply it after grading, you tend to retain better edge detail, but you could have slightly more grain on account of the grades affecting the original footage and emphasizing that grain. I tend to prefer to put noise reduction in first, but then I also tend to turn it off while I'm working on the grade because that makes my workflow lighter, and then I turn it back on and review it before exporting. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time!